Pardon the interruption, I'm Dan Cherish. And the warehouse better be careful today, because if he's got some terrible sports debate, I might, have, might just have to give him one of these. Sweet chin music. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Pardon the interruption, my game's always here. Unlike Notre Dame on Monday. But Ouch. let's get to it here. Ten topics, ten sports topics. Big wild card weekend, or excuse me, big playoff weekend this weekend. Let's get right to the topics here. No Notre Dame topics, no Alabama Notre Dame. We do have a as, college football topic. Yeah, kind of. But as you know. Wait, wait, tell them about the hashtag before we get this. Oh, as always, started. the hashtag. If you want to join the debate on Twitter, hashtag what a beautiful woman in reference to Brett Musburger. Brett Musburger pretty much losing his mind when he saw Catherine, uh, Catherine Webb during the telecast of Alabama's romp, destruction, embarrassment of Notre Dame, 42 Fourteen. Just choosing the. Uh, I don't know if anyone at this desk said it was going to be a blowout, but I think I said I think I said Notre Dame was going to win. You know, uh, I own up to my to my terrible choices. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I got one. All right, so our first topic of the day. What are your thoughts on the Bills and the Chiefs? They hired some new coaches. I think both of these hires are awful. The Chiefs go with Andy Reid. The Bills go with Doug Marone, who's done a he did a decent job at Syracuse. He did a decent job as a college football program. Got them to a couple bowls. Uh, I believe they. They played in two or three consecutive bowl games. It's just a pinstripe bowl. No, you know, not high level bowls. Yeah, those high level bowls, you're going down to Florida yeah. and enjoying yourself. Yeah, that's they're playing in New York, snuff. which is still a lot. It's like five hours from Syracuse down to uh, Yankee Stadium. But anyways, so he's done a good job as a head fo- as a head college coach. But I mean, for Syracuse, he was tremendous. They used to be awful. They win like six or seven games. Well, the, their coach before, uh, after Pasqualoni and before Marone. Uh, Paul terrible. Robinson, I think his name was. Terrible. What, ca- got to be up there with the five worst coaches in college yeah, football. Yeah, terrible. Like, history and winning percentage. Terrible job. Syracuse now average, but I don't know. Jumping from Syracuse to the Bills, for me, huge leap. But we saw Shiano go from a just a, a pretty good Rutgers team down to Tampa Bay. So he could be pretty average next year in the NFL, but I don't really like to hire that much. There's got to be a, uh, an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, some guy already on an NFL staff chopping at the bit to get a head coaching job. Specifically, uh, I think it's uh, Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator for Houston, I think, is who they were talking about. Defensive coordinator for Houston is uh, Wade Phillips. No, no, then it's um, Seattle, Okay, I believe. He said, or I don't know, I, one of those good defenses this year. I don't think it's Seattle because that's like Daryl Trouble or something like that. But. I don't know coordinators that well. But there's, there's, a, there's coordinators out there. Surprised that they didn't go that route. And you hire Andy Reid. He was awful this year as a head coach. Philadelphia's been pretty bad. But he's made it to four NFC Championship games, all those in a row, made it to a Super Bowl. So he can coach a little bit, but, again, I don't think it's the best way to go, a guy who just got fired for being pretty awful. Okay, okay. Bills, they're going to be awful regardless of who the coach is. So I think they're going to be awful for another three years. Chiefs Mike Zimmer may be Cincinnati's DC. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it's yeah, uh, Cincinnati. Yeah, okay. So, but on the Chiefs' standpoint, I mean, they went out there and essentially they got the best guy they could find. NFL experience, what he's done in the NFL wise. I mean, I the, guy's never, won a, the guy's never won. The guy's never won a Super Bowl. Uh, come on, Andy Reid has more. Ken Wisenhut was pretty good in Arizona. Than Ken, than Ken Wisenhut. He made it to a Super Bowl too. Yeah, they were nine and seven. Still and made it to a Super Bowl. Forty-seven to seven to the Patriots that year. Anyways, they still made it to the Super Bowl. I think the Chiefs. The Chiefs are a, a team that could. That could. You know, they got some weapons on offense. Dwayne Bow, Jamal Charles. Charles would just be like LaShawn McCoy in Philadelphia. Yeah. And then the defense, the defense has some solid players. They had five pro bowlers this year yeah. for a two-win team. I mean, they got – it's not a bad hire. I mean, Andy Reid, I, I thought the guy was going to take a year off or something. Yeah. Maybe go into television. Somebody will give him a deal, no doubt about yeah. it. Uh, so, decent decent hire there. I mean, a lot of teams are looking at him. Cardinals especially. Doug Marone in Buffalo, it doesn't mean anything. Just You could have hired, like, Vince Lombardi in Buffalo. I don't know if that would have done anything. Okay. Next topic. All right. So, should RG three have been pulled from that game during that Seattle wild card loss? Now this for the Redskins? Th- this is a heated debate. Probably the second he- most heated topic of the week. Yeah. And I don't think he should have been pulled. I mean, the the guys rally around this guy, Robert Griffin the third. They yeah. love him. They, they the offense it, it changes with Cousins, and they won a game with Cousins, and he won him a game when Griffin got hurt in the last drive, but. I think you leave Griffin in there. He's a gamer. He wanted to play. He knew it was at stake. Shanahan knew it was at stake, too. I don't like these people coming at Shanahan for not pulling Griffin. It's like the guy – this is the playoffs. If this is a regular season game, maybe you do something different. But this is the playoffs where you, you want your best guys out there. 
And even though Griffin was hurt, I think he should have stayed out there. And I'm glad that he did. It was a fluke play that he hurt himself on. Uh, I got to disagree with you completely. I would say there are some people saying he should have been pulled after they went up 14 and nothing. Obviously, that's too early. But when Seattle started they were coming up 14 back in that to game, nothing with Griffin. Yeah, but Seattle started coming back in that game. You could obviously see that Robert Griffin wasn't the same guy that he was pre-injury. Hobbling around, there were a lot of runs off tackle where he was literally, it was it was tough to watch. The guy was limping all over the place. He was limping. At that point, you have to say he's not able to drive off that foot at all. He sailed balls all over the place because he couldn't play it on that leg. Wasn't running well. Really wasn't doing much well at all at, at that point. The offense completely struggled after those first two drives. I think at that point you have to see that, look, this guy's been successful this year because we're getting him out of the pocket. We're letting him run that spread option look. He's not able to run now, really struggling to throw. we got to do something here. We're losing this game. This game's starting to get away from us. We trust Cousins. Even though it's a tough game to put him in, Seattle's defense is great. But you got to put Cousins in there. I, I think you would have had a better chance of getting something out of that game. Even though when Cousins came in, he wasn't that great. He made a few good throws, but... I just think seeing RG3 well, struggle like that. Well, the offensive line did no yeah. favors for Cousins. I mean, everyone was just like, all right, Griffin's out. Let's not even bother. I don't think that's what they were thinking, but that's what it I, looked like. I just think seeing RG3 the way he was, wasn't the same guy. Really wasn't effective after those first two drives. Probably should have pulled. Not, uh, like I said, obviously don't pull him after those first. It's still the first quarter. 14 nothing. Don't pull him then. But somewhere in the third, it should have been okay. This guy's really struggling. He's hurt. We got to make a change here. Try and get something going. Okay. Okay. So what do we got for our next topic, Tom? Okay, Jared. We just saw four games this weekend. Yep. Three of them were yeah. pretty terrible, and one of them was pretty decent. Was this the worst weekend of playoff football the in worst, your memory? The, yeah, the, the, probably the worst weekend I could ever remember. This was awful, starting from what Saturday. What was so bad about it? Poor games all over the place. First of all, that the Baltimore Baltimore Indianapolis game not really that interesting even though it was kind of a close game but you never really felt like Indianapolis was going to win that mm -hmm, game mm -hmm. even when it, even when it was close absolutely no off barely any offense whatsoever in that Cincinnati Houston game mm -hmm. pretty abysmal game throughout Andy Dalton was pathetic at points and i don't know why they weren't you know obviously Houston was double covering AJ Green but he's the best player on your team best one of the best receivers in the league top 5 easily Throw him the ball. I don't care how many guys they have him. Get the ball over to 18. That game was awful. Green Bay, Minnesota. Joe Webb couldn't complete a five-yard pass. Bounced more balls into my, receivers my than anyone Jonah. I've ever seen. Was terrible. That game was atrocious. That was probably one of the worst playoff games you ever. You wonder how Minnesota got in the playoffs watching that. You, uh, quarterback, I mean, you have to say. we. I love Dungy before. Like, always, this is going to help the yeah, team. We always bag on Christian Ponder, but that's what this team looks like without Christian it's, Ponder. It's so, just like Cutler. So, yeah, exactly. So, Ponder, decent. Not a great quarterback, but they need him. He's, yeah. Joe Webb's awful. Oh, and then, who is Joe Webb's backup? I don't, I don't right, know right. if they had one. Okay. And then, finally, Seattle, uh, Washington. Pretty good game, but again, not really interesting. It wasn't a, a, a back-and-forth game. It was hard to really get involved in it. And, and then, obviously, the RG3 situation. So, overall, four awful games with possibly the worst playoff game ever. Okay. Well, that was Cincinnati, Houston, the worst player. No, uh, Minnesota, Green Bay. Green Bay. That game Minnesota. was the worst game. One of the worst games I've ever seen. All right. Well, you know, this weekend was pretty bad, but I'm going to look a couple of years back, 2010, the divisional round. Patriots had the 430 game on Sunday. I'll get to that later. First game was probably the best game. It was decent. It was Baltimore, and it was the Steelers. Yep. The Steelers won the game at yep. home. Nightcap, we get to see the first seed Atlanta Falcons. They have the sixth seed oh, Green yeah. Bay Packers come in. Green Bay just completely yeah. annihilates them. Awful, awful game. Next day, we got another NFC matchup. The 8-9 and nine Seattle Seahawks at this point going to Chicago. Chicago was awful, too, by the yeah. way. Chicago beats them. It's not even a game. Next game, Jets at Patriots. Pats just absolutely throw up a stinker. Yep. Worst wild card weekend right there because you got three awful games, one decent one in Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Plus, the Pats lost when they should have won the AFC that year. Yep. No, awful I weekend. I don't know. I, this weekend was bad. It was really, really bad. Yeah, but the Pats are still in the playoff mix, so you, you got to throw that yeah. in there. Yeah. It, that was like an interesting game, though. Like, they lost that game, didn't play yeah, that's ball, because but that was an a interesting fan. game. That's because you're a Patriots If you were a, a fan no, well, of neither like, team, you would have been like, this game really wasn't that good? Yeah, I thought it was a good game. That's because you're a Pats fan. Well, no, as a football fan, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Okay. Next topic. 
All right, now let's get into these games this weekend in the divisional rounds. First, here on this on our order here, Baltimore, Denver, Saturday, 4.30 on CBS. That's correct. It's going to be uh, DRF and Gumbel, I'm sure, calling that game. I don't Probably. know for, for a fact, but I'm pretty sure Sims and Nance are going to be doing the Pats game. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, what are my thoughts in this game? My thoughts are the Ravens aren't very good. Yep. Man is going to sling it. Okay. Denver's going to host the AFC Championship game. That's that's what okay. my thoughts are. It's going to be Ray Lewis's last game. I mean, we're going to get like 10 minutes of Ray Lewis coverage. Just straight up hugging, kissing, yeah. dapping up everybody, yeah. dancing. You may, he probably won't dance because you're going to lose, but yeah. you know what I'm well, saying. Well, do it. I don't know if he does it on the road, but he'll probably do it anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he probably does do it on the road. And if I saw it, if he was at Gillette Stadium and I was there, I would probably get. I would probably watch. I'd probably take my phone out, snap a, snap a shot of okay. it. Okay. Just, just let right. me know. All right. uh, yeah, so I think the Ravens stand no chance in this game. I think they're nine and a half point underdogs. Nine and a half point. Yeah, underdogs, I don't know what the spread. Something are. like that. Uh, maybe they'll cover the spread. I don't think so. I think br um, it's going to get out of hand early. Manning is going to throw for two touchdowns the first two drives. He's going to throw for, you know, he's going to throw for over three hundred yards. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be Broncos like thirty one to like sixteen. Flacco isn't as bad as we think he is. The guy's won five he's games, awful five years in a row in the play, like he's, five playoff wins in five not, years. I don't think he's very good. I think if you he's put won a game every year in the playoffs. I think if you put That's him uh, on a team, like, the team around him is pretty good. You put him on a team like a middle of the road team, he'd be pretty awful. I don't like think the Flacco's Jets. that great. Yeah, you put him on the Jets, he'd be no better than like a Mark Sanchez. They have to go on the road. Flacco is awful on the road. Obviously, Denver good at home in the playoffs. Tough place for anyone to play. In Vesco Field. I think at mile high. I think Denver's Denver's going to kill him. I think this one's, like you said, it's going to be a blowout early. Manning's going to have a great game. Flacco's going to struggle. Well, again, like you said, we're going to see a ton of Ray Lewis, at, uh, uh, Ray Lewis coverage. Not interested in it. I thought that last play when he was in on offense was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. A stupid <laughs> uh, just get out of the league, buddy. Um, yeah, I think Baltimore's going to kill. I don't think their defense is as good as everyone no. thinks they are. Manning, as you said, will probably throw for like three, uh, 300 yards, three touchdowns. This game will be over by, at minimum, the third quarter. Denver hosting the NFC Championship game. They're going to be tough to beat in these playoffs. I, I want really to say, I hope it doesn't playoffs. snow this Saturday in Denver because I'm going to be in Denver. Really? And i got to fly through it to get to my destination. Nice. Yes, thank you. All right, Tom. What do we got for our next topic? All right, so we're going... Sunday's matchup, Battle of the Birds right here. Yeah. Seattle going down to Atlanta, taking on the Dirty Birds. I think this is a tough game to call because a lot of people look at Atlanta and say, well, these guys are awful in the playoffs. Matt Ryan's awful in the playoffs. Atlanta just loses when they get into playoffs under Mike Smith yeah. with Matt Ryan at yeah, quarterback. Yeah. And Thomas Seattle, Dimitrov at GM. Yeah, and, Tom, and uh, obviously Seattle looked pretty good, won the game, great defense. They're probably one of the better defenses. Obviously, I think they're the best defense in the league easily. Big physical secondary. I think White, White and Jones, they're going to be in for a battle. I think they can win those battles on the outside. I don't think Atlanta runs the ball that well. I don't think they'll run it well at home, especially up, uh, up against his run defense. So I want to pick Seattle in this one, and I'm going to. I Seattle, think Seattle, Seattle is everyone's goes on the sexy road. pick. I think Seattle goes on the road, gets it done. I just don't see it with this Atlanta team. I don't look at their passing attack and say they're a great passing attack or they're a great running attack or their defense is great. A good team, struggle at times this year. I think Seattle goes in there, plays a good defensive game, keeps it low scoring, end up winning like 24-17. So it's a close one, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go right here, and I'm picking Atlanta. Okay. Everyone's going to Seattle. Everyone loves Everyone loves Seattle right now. They look good. They, they won like seven in a row, okay. I mean, they Atlanta went, lost their last game. They the won Buccaneers. across the country, which they've struggled with on the road. Got to win. Yes, they won three straight, four straight road games or something like that. I think they're going to lose this game. I think this is going to be the coming out party for Matty Heisman. Can you say okay. it with me? Coming Matty, out party for, for Matty, Matty Heisman. Heisman. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so Matty Heisman, big day. 300 plus yards, three touchdowns, wow. one to Tigo, one to wow. Roddy, one to somebody else, maybe them again. Wow. I'm calling one for Tigo and one for Roddy. And then, uh, so Michael Turner, he's going to have, I'm calling for a big offensive onslaught from the Atlanta Falcons. I, mean, wait for it. I don't think that'll happen. I know you won't think it's going to happen. The rest of America probably doesn't, but I think I think the Atlanta Falcons are due to have a good playoff game. And I think it's right now. These guys probably have the most pressure to just win one game right I now. Think the Atlanta Falcons, uh, just Mike Smith. I mean, maybe the guy has turned into a Marty Schottenheimer. I don't know, but Matty Heisman hasn't gotten it done. Mike Smith hasn't gotten it done. I think this is the time they can be hosting the NFC Championship game. Imagine that. Yeah, that would be weird. 
But it I, would be weird. It would be really, really weird. I think if Atlanta's going to win this game, it's still going to be a low scoring. I don't think they're going to have a huge offensive game. Even if they win, All right. it would have to be kind the, of a slug, slug fest. The for Turner is probably a stretch. I think it would be a slug fest kind of I like. Think, I, think I don't think we're going to see either team get into the high 20s. I don't think either team obviously will get to I, the I 30s. I think the Atlanta defense is going to cause some struggles for Russell Wilson. Yeah, I mean, they he's can. still a rookie quarterback. They can. And he's still vulnerable. I yeah. think it can happen. But I, I think it would be low scoring. I don't think you're going to see yeah, three I don't touchdowns. Think I think it would be 30, like it's not going to get into the 30s. How, no, how no, no, no. That? I think how it, that? no. I think either way, the game, the winner's going to have like 21 to 24 points. I think in this one, it's going to be right. low scoring, tight. Ryan could still have three touchdown passes with 21 to 24 points. But anyways, you're going Atlanta. I'm going Seattle. We Give both like Baltimore in the first. Let's move on to the next divisional game. And this one is Green Bay going on the road out to the Bay. Taking on the Niners. Niners. So, uh, this is this is probably the best match for the weekend. Yeah. You would say so? I would say so? Okay. Oh, Packers, I mean... Packers at Niners. Close. Close. I mean, this is, th- these are two teams yeah. with similar records. Yep. And then different offensive styles. Yeah. I think what's going to happen in this game is the Green Bay defense has been pretty bad pretty much all season. I mean, they've had Joe Webb last week, so they obviously were awesome. Yep. But... They got another quarterback who can run, and this guy can actually complete a pass. And his name's Colin Kaepernick. I think he's going to be a solid, solid performance out of Colin. Not too much, not too little. They're going to let the defense take over, and Rodgers is going to have not a top flight day for the guy. Uh, two years ago in the playoffs, the guy was dynamite. Yeah. Now I think he's going to have a little bit of a setback, and I'm going to pick San Francisco in this game. Yeah, San Francisco at home, and you know, looking at their offense, one of the most innovative offenses in the league. John Harbaugh does just a, just does a great job getting that offense ready every week. New wrinkles, new new looks, using his talent to the best of their ability. And we saw Kaepernick on one play, and that you know he only played one play in that last game against Green Bay. He ripped off a 50-yard run up the middle. So obviously they know what Colin Kaepernick can do. Again, second-year guy hasn't played a full season, so let's see how he responds in the early stages of this, uh, of this game. But let's remember Harbaugh made Alex Smith look like a great quarterback in the playoff game last year. I think he's yeah. going to have a game plan that's going to favor Kaepernick. Get the ball out to Vernon Davis. Michael Crabtree's been playing well this yeah, year. Yeah. Looks like a pretty good receiver. Yeah. I don't think he's great. Good receiver, though. Yeah. So they'll run the ball well. Green Bay won't be able to stop that. Play action pass, quarterback runs, all sorts of different stuff. Remember, Frank Gore, still a great running back. Surprisingly, still pretty awesome. No Justin Smith. That's the only issue on their defense, but you still have Alden Smith coming off the edge. Still got some great players on that defense. Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman. I think this one, out of any of them, if it, it, this one could become a shootout, could become like a thirty-five. Like an even old, that, an I don't old think. match of some gunslingers. I think this is this Green Bay offense is the only team that could score thirty plus on this San Fran defense. But I think San Fran's going to win this one. I'm going to put my final score at. I'll go 27-20. 49ers, do you want me to do a final? Can we can do a final for everyone. If you want to, I've just all been right, throwing right, them out right. there. I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, I like yours. I like yours a lot. Um, I don't think the Niners are going to score into the 30s, so I'm yeah. going to go 27 also. Yeah. 26. Okay. Well, that's a good game. I- I'm going to call David Akers is going to make the game-winning field goal. David Green Akers. Next topic. No this one, hitting close to home, as we got Houston traveling up to New England. Danny A, okay. take it away Let from me here. just say this right now. I've been hearing the jibber-jabber on the radio all week. <laughs> And I don't like what I'm hearing. Okay. They, nobody's okay. giving the, the Houston Texans yeah. a shot in this game. And I just yeah. want to say that the Pats, I'm going to pick them to win, but there's a chance they're going to lose the game. Yeah. Dan Shaughnessy comes out two by weeks. Shank's an idiot. Shank is such an idiot. Anyways. His nickname Shank? Yeah, everyone calls him Shank. He guys a moron. Really? I, moron. I enjoy his columns more than anybody. Oh, my still God. Call he's such people. an idiot. So he, goes, he, go, he comes out with that garbage. Yeah. If you listen to the to the morning show. Oh, and he's come back. He's backpedaled from that article. Oh, really? Bad, oh, pretty badly All already. Right. It's, it's already Arian Foster's like Twitter yeah, profile picture. Which is funny. Um, then I'm going to say everyone else is just like, there's no way that the Houston Texans are going to win this game. They have a terrible quarterback. They have a terrible coach. It's like, all right, ease up. The Patriots defense can be awful. Yep. The Pats had two fumbles in that last game. Who knows what's going to happen because they were both in the red yep. zone. If Houston picked those up, I mean, yep. there's uh, two touchdowns. You just got taken back. And then... I mean, Brady, if the guy if the guy doesn't have a good game like we see, yep. the Pats have trouble winning. Yep. So if Brady turns the ball over, one or if, if if there's more than like two turnovers for the Patriots offense, you're gonna have mm. a grind it out kind of game yep. right here. So I just want to give the Texans more love than they've been getting. But I'm gonna go Patriots. Give me thirty one for the Pats. 
Give me 21 for the Texans. So I'm even, I'm going over the spread, yeah. but like still, come on. Yeah. Um, I don't like this matchup at all. Don't like it. You brought up 2010. We killed New, we killed the Jets at home. Monday Night Football people said, all right, the Jets, awful team. When they come again, come up against the Pats in the playoffs, no chance, especially if they have to play them at home, they'll get blown out. We saw the Pats played awful in that game. Lost that game, coming off of a bye, a year when they were the favorite to win the AFC. I wouldn't. Well, they're probably close to being the favorites. I think it's obviously between them and Denver this year. But Houston, as we saw, got blown out. But it was a good game, close game. Not really a close game. They got blown out, but they didn't oh, play it was an awful an game. Blowout. They didn't play an awful, awful game. As you said, some of those fumbles could have gone their way. I want to see what the secondary looks like because if Tlaib isn't healthy, he's not in the game. Andre Johnson can go off. Houston, even though they didn't look great last week against Cincinnati, I think they still carry a pretty potent threat if they can find their early season form. So I'm going on the record. Houston Texans come in and Foxborough pull the upset 27-17. 17 points Their for the pass. Houston's defense comes to play. J.J. Watt, not, ef- not effective in that first game whatsoever. I think he makes a few plays in this one. Changes the game. Ridley, as you said, got to hold on to the rock. Brady strugg- had struggled in that Jets game. I think he's going to struggle in this one. I also got to point out, Rob Gronkowski is back. So that, that but how, how is back killing. is he? How uh, you know? Is he's he back. the same guy? He's back. Is he the Nobody same guy? Nobody comes over though? the middle. He just scores a touchdown. Like, is he? Every is he game. the? You know, you still got. He came back for the Super Bowl. Wasn't great last year. He's back. Still got that injury. If he's if he's, he's 100, prob- percent that makes a huge difference. But I don't think he is 100. percent Well, he's obviously better than he was in the Super Bowl. Guy could barely walk. Yeah, but I still think he's hurt. So I just don't know where he is on a scale think, of think zero percent to 100. I think he's in good shape to have a great game. And obviously Houston, Gronkowski's in the scouting report, so yeah, they're okay. gonna find a way. I, I think Houston finds a way in this one. Okay, okay. What do we got Sorry, for our next Pat topic? Fans. What do we got for our next topic, Tom? All right, I guess we're going to hit our old 1-10 to 10 scale right yeah. here. How excited are you for the NHL lockout being kaput? Uh, like a like a 1 or a 2? It, it definitely didn't change my everyday life. It was nice to come uh, come on and hear that morning that the lockout is over from just about everyone that I know on every social media website, people who I didn't even I think I think people are watched. bandwagon hockey fans. Oh, there's so crazy. many. It's unbelievable. So many people who... Last year, you wouldn't ever see them say anything about the NHL. All of a sudden, oh, the, hockey, the lockout's over. Uh, my life is back to normal. It's like, I didn't even know you watched hockey, so I don't know what's going on yeah, there. Dude, the, yeah, this, this more than any other sport, is bandwagon hockey yeah. fans. I, oh, and it was worse, especially after the Bruins won. Everyone oh. in class had a Bruins hat, a Bruins shirt. It's like, you, don't, you didn't watch one. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't watch hockey at all. I'm not going to comment and say, oh, well, I'm such a Bruins fan now because the, they won the Stanley Cup. I could care less. I was excited that they won the cup. I was. It was indifferent. I went. I went to the parade and had an awesome time. When like this, when the Sox and the Bruins win world titles, indif- completely indifferent to me. I just don't. I don't care. So dude, lockout's dude, have over. Have you been to a parade? I've been to the past parades. Oh really? I yeah. never went to a past parade. I was thinking about going, but then they're they always free. The they're always super freezing. They're not fun at all because it's just absolutely. Like, I've been to the three. Seas, you can go to the like the seas one in the summer. That's probably great. Pats frigid like mid February. Negative 10 degrees in packed Boston. It's like, this yeah. is not awesome. You get to see Scrubs drive by for like two seconds. You always miss like the star players coming by. So yeah, yeah. The it's duck, just all the, right. People make a huge fuss about how these are duck boats, but you can't even see the players. Yeah. They're on, yeah, the, so they're on the end. There's like two players per duck boat, plus there's like 12 other people in their entourage on the back. So you're like, where's Teddy yeah. Bruschi? Oh, he's on the other side. It's, there's nobody on this side. So the, oh, that's true. Yeah, I'll go. I'll I, go. I, I, I can't I'll even go see like him. A, I'll go like a two so hockey fans stop going on like Twitter and saying like, when is the logo going to end, blah, 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 blah. Now it's over. Go watch hockey. Be, you know, go away for a little bit. I, I've been to three parades. The Red Sox in 07, awesome. The Celtics in 08, decent. And the Bruins in 2011, phenomenal. Been all three pets. And they were, wow. like I said, pretty average. All right, all right. Well, uh, I'm going to go – got to get my rating right now, and it's – I guess I'm going to go four. Okay. Not too excited. Okay. Not a huge hockey guy. My life was really not m- much different at all without hockey. Yeah. But, you know, it'll be fun come playoff time when the Bruins should be in the playoffs. I mean, who knows if they're going to make the playoffs because, like – I don't know what – Yeah, I don't know what schedule. the schedule is. If they have a bad stretch – Who knows? I mean, anybody could be knocked out of yeah. the playoffs. But, you know, what really was exciting me hockey-wise was the cold weather – I don't like the cold at all, but 
I was thinking maybe I can dust off my old Chicago's, hit up the pond, play some pond hockey. Okay. I think it is. It's getting warm now. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? It's getting warm. It's going to be 50 on Saturday. It's going to okay. be like 45 nice. on Sunday. Sweet. I wanted it to snow for the Houston Texans coming in. Enjoy the snow, Houston. Yeah. And then there's no snow. Yeah. Ah. Well, that's that. Hockey fans, rejoice. Yep. For me, like you said, my life wasn't different during the lockout. Won't be different after. I'll probably watch one or two Bruins games, maybe a playoff game here or there. But, yep. yeah, it is what it is. All right. Less hockey highlights on SportsCenter? Fine with that. Next well, topic. Well, actually, they got to balance out the awful NBA yeah. highlights. Yeah. So, yeah, bring on the hockey. Okay. All right, so the next question. This is one of the most touchy subjects mm, yep. probably of all time. Yep. Hall of Fame ballot came out today. I don't believe anybody got in. Pretty okay. sure nobody got in. you got to get 75% of the vote from the BBW. Has that ever happened? Like, there's a class uh, where no one got in? This is the eighth in? time since the first year was 39, 1939. Eighth time that's happened. Okay. Uh, I don't remember the last time. But if you were a Hall of Fame voter, would you vote for alleged steroid users to be in the Hall of Fame? I've come on this show and said I'm not averse to steroid users in sports. Like, obviously, I prefer it if you didn't. But if you do and you get caught, then fine. Take your suspension. Don't do it again. But I'm not going to condemn you in any sport. I'm not a baseball purist. I've said that many times on this show. Not really even a ba huge baseball fan. But for me, not a huge deal because I'll just keep saying it. Everyone would seem like everyone was doing it. At one point, you know, some things weren't illegal and some guys had good, good careers before and all this other stuff. So I would probably still vote for guys who are even alleged because they are alleged steroid users. Half these guys, there's nothing concrete that these guys yeah. have even used steroids. Like, Ryan Braun is an alleged steroid user. We well, don't know if he did or if yeah. he didn't or whatnot. And so, I mean, it is what it is. So I would still vote for him because I think it's too hard to distinguish this guy was using it. And how many guys who have no who have no allegation against him were, and, and how many of those guys were? like So, like, you, Barry Bonds, how many of the pitchers – what, that he was facing were on steroids. I don't know. Who knows? So, for me, if you don't know, vote him in. I'm right there with you, Jared. Alleged steroid users, you don't know. Yeah. We think Barry Bonds did. We think Clemens did. They didn't get in. Schilling got more more votes than them. And Schilling is not a guy who we know took steroids. Yeah. But, I mean, some of these numbers that Clemens was putting up when he was 44 years yeah. old. All right, here's the thing. These guys who are voting for the Hall of Fame, Voted for these guys to be Cy Youngs and MVPs, yeah. knowing that they were on stuff. And now are you going to take it back and not vote them in? The BBW. Come on! Those guys are just old, old men who have nothing else going for them except baseball and stats. And it's such, it's so, it's it's such a just, numbers game. It's so like, dumb. All right. I would vote for them. But like I said, these guys who are voting are just like... You know, I don't. He, he took steroids. I'm not voting for him. Yeah. Well, how do you know this guy didn't? Yeah. It's just a, a complete carousel like that. I just think it's so stupid. If Bonds and Clemens, if Bonds and Clemens did get voted in, I wouldn't care. I know. I know people would get very upset if they were in. What do you think would the world would come to if that actually happened? I'm pretty sure there would be no There'd riots be a, or anything. There would be a lot of people for like three days would be like, this is a joke or whatever. And obviously there'd be the extremists. So I'm never going to the Hall of Fame ever or anything. I'm not watching video. Who cares? The guy will go in 20 years from now. It'll get brought up every once or two, like every once or uh, once or twice a season. Oh, he's in the Hall of Fame. And, and plus, if they I can't really, even name, oh, even right. in like sports I care about, I can't name most of the Hall of Famers. So. These alleged steroid users, Bonds, Clemens, if they didn't want him in the Hall of Fame, they wouldn't put him on the ballot. Yeah. It's like, you can ban people. Pete Rose is banned. Yeah. You can ban people. Yeah. Shoeless Joe Jackson's banned. Yeah. You can't vote for him. Yeah. You can't vote for Pete I Rose. I agree with you there. If you don't, yeah, that's a great point. If you don't want him getting in, don't put him on the ballot. Ban him. End of story. So, yep. eh, vote for him. All right. I'm fine with that. The guy still holds, like, a bunch of records. Like, you can't just look at this. Pete Rose? Or Barry Bonds. Like, oh, he has all these records, and it's like, well, we're not going to put him in. I mean. Barry Bonds? I heard If you're not going to put him in the Hall of Fame. Strike the records too. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's yeah. what I think. Baseball on their records. Stupid. Baseball on their records. But uh, I heard this on the radio, and I've seen it before. I said it on my radio show. Barry Bonds in 2004. It was like a 608 on base percentage. Yep. 232 walks. Ugh. Guy got walked 232 yeah. times. That's over once a game. There was a point. That's like one point. That's like one in the third walks a game. There was a uh, during one of those seasons where he's getting walked all the time. There was a running thing on Sports Center where every walk they would like. 
add 90 feet, and then they waited until he got walked the distance of the Golden Gate Bridge. That went on for like half the season. <laughs> oh, listen to this. I went to a San Francisco Giants game in 2004, this year actually. Yeah. They were playing the Expos. Fun yep. factoid. Um, and every every vendor walking up and down the aisles trying to sell whatever they may sell. I mean, it's too bad the Ignited Joey Dice wasn't one yeah. of those vendors because I'm sure he would have been awesome. Will he be in All the on Sunday? Yes. Okay. All the vendors would sit down. They wouldn't interrupt the action. They would watch Barry Bonds bat. And when Barry Bonds got intentional walks, which I saw two of them, rubber chickens, everyone's good. Okay. Ru- rubber chicken it. Right. Just, just, just how just, I experienced it. Just a giant fun fact there for yes. you. Yes. Just one to let you. Two fun facts the rubber chicken and the vendors sit down. Yeah. Can't All buy right. food when Barry Bonds is up. Gotta watch Barry. Okay. On to our, on to our last topic of the night. Tom, hit us with it. So. My, during Monday night's embarrassment, is the only way you can put it, of Notre Dame, uh, and uh, actually coming out of the game, a lot of people think Manti Teo coming in that game, top five pick in the NFL. Now, a lot of people think he's going to slide in the draft because he didn't really do anything in that game. Anyways, neither did anyone wearing a Golden Dome helmet, but th- th- that's just beside the point. So, <laughs> how great, though, early in that game was Brent Musburger's reaction to the crowd shot of A.J. McCarron's girlfriend, Catherine Webb, who... Let's just call a spade a spade here. This guy's out kicking his coverage by a lot, but... <laughs> That's what you call that? Oh, yeah. A.J. McCarron? Oh, He's yeah. a quarterback, you know? He's out. You grow up. Yeah, you, I know. You gotta, get the, yeah. you gotta get your son up in the morning, yeah. throw the ball around with Pop. Maybe you do. I don't I don't know. All right. How great was the reaction? It was probably the most entertaining thing of the night. What? Like, the game was awful. Oh, I thought the game was great. All right. Well, you're the game. The for a pure football fan, which you claim you you were, was excellent. It was, oh, it was not great. a good football game. Oh no, I disagree with that completely. Not, not a good football the game. Shellacking Alabama. Not, was not great a good to football watch. game. Best part of the game was when Brent Musburger saw Catherine Webb. He also, you know, he threw a little shout out to D.D. Joiner or D.D. Bonner. D.D. Bonner, uh, A.J. McCarron's mother. Uh, but yeah, he. Uh, he loved it, and you know, yeah. it it was. It, I caught the end of it because I was with a group of people, so we were jibber jabbering, talking. Yeah. And I was like, "Did anyone else just catch that?" He just said, "What a beautiful woman." Yeah. I, that could have been about AJ McCarron's mother, but I'm pretty sure that was about no, his right. girlfriend. Most entertaining part of the game. I mean, ESPN comes out and says we're we're apologizing for Brent Musburger. ESPN is stupid. Who cares? But, I mean, it blew up the Twitter universe. I mean, it was just great. Just great. Yeah, scale was, scale of 1 to 10, 10. Yeah, no, it was pretty great. Um, it was hilarious. I caught the entire situation. And as soon as his initial reaction of just, wow, it was like, oh, boy, here comes <laughs> here comes a great reaction out of this guy. Just classic older gentleman seeing a good-looking younger, younger lady. just And having the microphone know, in front of him. Yeah, going in on it. The gr- best part, too... He was trying to get Kirk Kirk Street on it. Kirk would, did not yeah. want to touch it <laughs> at all. Didn't say anything. Just sat there. Couple laughs. Couple like he really, said like yeah we do or something because he's like you quarterbacks get all the good looking yeah, ones. A couple just uncomfortable laughs and stuff. But he wanted out of that situation as fast as he could. And you know what was also great about it? They showed her like twice a quarter. Yeah. I mean. Oh yeah. She was a, probably the reason. Yeah. And after the, the game. game, after the game, they showed AJ McCarron going up to the stands. Obviously, she was in the shop the entire time, even though he was talking to his parents for like five minutes. Oh, really? She was right there. Obviously, the game obviously she was in the shot. So ESPN saying, oh, you know, whatever, you know, I read the thing. Stupid apology. Who really cares? It, you know, it wasn't I think, offensive at all. It was just like, she's hot. That's probably we some, get it. That's probably something where you just go to Brent, like, probably, you know, I, we don't really mind, but just cool it. Maybe next time, don't yeah. do that. Because I, if I put I put myself in that shoes, I probably wouldn't go like... Well, you, gotta, you, you can't blame Brent in this situation. you got to blame the producer who he told was, the cameraman to put the shot on Miss Catherine Webb. Yeah, well... No, well, you need that. Because, like, she's an Auburn fit. Because the story is she's, like, an Auburn she, Auburn grad, Alabama. So it's, like, She's weird. hot. Let's get her on camera. Yeah, That's basically. So, I mean, his reaction, fine. I don't know if I would have reacted that way. Just, again, thinking, like, uh, this probably isn't, like... Probably won't sound, like, professional and nice if I do this, but... You can definitely say, like, I don't know, you can say that she's a good-looking girl. Obviously, she's a good-looking girl. And A.J. McCarron, congratulations what to if him. He, what if he said A.J. McCarron should wipe that up? I would be. <laughs> that would be <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> that, that, might, probably might, that, that would be, be a hilarious, hilarious but you, yeah, you definitely, statement. I don't think you could say that. But saying she's a beautiful woman is fine with me. Great moment. Not the best moment of the game. 
uh, by far. I thought the game was actually. I thought the game actually was interesting because it was just. A but it hasn't been a good national title game since Texas USC. Every year you. Could. I thought these I games thought, are great. I Nobody thought last year likes these games at all. I thought last year. Well, obviously you guys don't know anything about college football as we saw because I predicted Notre Dame would get killed. I've been saying it for months. So. Look so, at you. So that's all smart. Pants. But I thought last year's game was pretty good for a twenty-one nothing game. Good game. Watched the entire the year thing. before. It was interesting. The year before, we're like, all right, this is going to be an absolute shootout. Nineteen eleven. I thought obviously the game where Colt McCoy got hurt that wasn't obviously awful, that wasn't a good awful, game. Awful. Uh, and that I actually did like that Auburn Oregon game. That was it was low scoring, but it was a close game. Came down to the very end, the last drive. Yeah, but we game. knew Auburn was going to win. Wasn't time. great. I don't. I disagree with that. And I thought this year was pretty. I thought it was a good game. I thought it was actually interesting to watch the way Alabama was playing in that game and how dominant they were. I thought it was interesting. I thought it stunk. Yeah. Well. Not all of us are college football, you know, fans, experts, and analysts like myself. So, but that is it for tonight here on PTR. We did ten topics. Fun factoid for you before we go. You know what Shawn Michaels' first name is? No. Well, real name, not first name. Mm, I don't. Michael Shawn Hickenbottom. Fun fact for you. That's a great name. We're gonna be off for a little while. We'll probably be back when the semester starts. Danny Hayes going to Cali. So we'll Call be me off the cool for a little California bit. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably going to be the hashtag for that. <laughs> but we'll be back when the semester starts here on PTR. As always, tip your waiters.